Hellions number 15 brings the battle between Tarn the Uncaring's Locus Vile of Arako and the Hellions to a head as Mr. Sinister rushes to unveil his first Krakoan Chimera, made from Arako and Krakoan DNA. It's another excellent entry in the single most enjoyable Wave 2 comic of this era of X-Men, with huge ramifications on the impending Inferno event. Today I'll answer, what is Sinister's secret Chimera mutant DNA combo? Which council member is secretly keeping tabs on the Hellions? Why Hellions is the best Wave 2 comic of the X-Line. Hey everybody, welcome to Crack and Krakoa number 194. I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. If you like the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel and endeavors, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. It all helps me out a great deal here finding new X-Men fans and comics fans like yourselves. If you missed it, Casual Krakoa this week, which usually occurs on Wednesdays after new comics are released, came out yesterday, came out Tuesday evening. We had a live Casual Krakoa talking about the new X-Men event that was announced for 2022, the X-Lives and X-Deaths of Wolverine, or of course the 10 Lives and 10 Deaths of Wolverine. You can find that in the playlist for all X-Men comics, which are linked to in the show notes, or of course, subscribe to the CBH YouTube channel, and you'll find all the videos there. You can find full X-Men and comic reading orders over on comicbookherald.com with links in the show notes. Spoilers for Discuss Comics will follow. Writer Zeb Wells, artist Rose Antonio, colors Rain Barreto, letters by Ariana Maher. The issue opens with the Wright discovering Nanny's ship and their little AI baby that Nanny, uh, you know, procured way back when from Cameron Hodge and the Wright, but that's not really a big part of this issue, so we're not going to spend too much time on it. Elsewhere, Mr. Sinister brings his clone, freshly escaped from the terrifying tortures of Tarn the Uncaring, to see what Sinister's been creating with his stolen Araco mutant DNA. Note here that Sinister's interacting with each other is comedy gold, and I remain delightfully, you know, just like enthused how Zeb Wells has taken the evolution of Sinister from Kieran Gillen and Jonathan Hickman and made it wholly his own. As Sinister says here, I've seen the future and it is Chimera. I talked about this extensively in last issue's review, but as a quick reminder, Chimeras are explained in Hickman and R.B. Silva's powers of 10 as combinations of mutant DNA. So you can create a mutant with the powers of five mutants blended together rather than the standard individual power set. Sinister has already created at least one Chimera in this lifeline, making himself a mutant with John Proudstar's DNA, and this is the second. In Hellions number 15, we learn that Sinister's Chimera is a combination of Tarn the Uncaring godlike abilities and, as we should have predicted, Sinister's own body and abilities. I do also want to call out here, because it's not really, you know, del deliberated on in the issue, but in earlier issues, in Hickman's X-Men run, the actual X-Men series, it is mentioned that any individual on the Great Ring of Arako is an Omega-level mutant, that only Omega levels are allowed as, you know, basically the, the Arako counterpart to Krakoa's council, okay, their Great Ring. Tarn the Uncaring is on at the Council, so we know Tarn the Uncaring or on the Great Ring, so we know Tarn the Uncaring is an Omega level, which means Sinister just created an Omega level Chimera, okay? This was actually not emphasized heavily enough. This is a huge, huge deal. Uh, I don't, we don't really know if this was done in Life 9 ever with Omega levels before, okay? It's honestly a really exciting reveal here, having Tarn the Uncaring's got like abilities with Sinister's own body. Um, you know, it's Sinister's Chimera production's fully established, but we also have this new wrinkle of Sinister playing with the DNA of Araka mutants, not something we heard about when Chimeras were first described in Powers of 10. And again, again, the fact that this is an Omega level is a big, big deal, okay? Now, I think the Locus Vile, the way they're whooping on the Hellions in these two issues, their fear of Tarn the Uncaring too, it really establishes Tarn as this major threat, as a real major player. I think it's actually in a lot of ways what X-Fans have been clamoring for from Mr. Sinister, who of course is so much more glam and humorous in this incarnation, but was a villain who was very, very scary to those who he was leading even, right? Way back when he was leading the Marauders and, you know, holding up Sabretooth by his neck, making him look like a scared puppy way back in the build to X-Men Inferno comics in the late 80s, okay? But elsewhere, as far as the story goes, the secrets of Sinister and Italians are spilling out into the open with the betrayal of Conan working for Sinister on behalf of her digital daughter genetic sequence. And again, I remain absolutely amazed at Wells and company salvaging threads from Fallen Angel into this story. You know, breaking John Greycrow here right through the heart, right through the heart. He's fallen for Conan hard and driving him to fully give in to his violent past here. He unveils and, and unloads a gun to make Cable proud, right? This giant weapon, because again, John Greco is mutant ability, basically a giant living gun. Um, and again, makes Cable proud as he strikes back at the Locus Vile. And specifically here, 
at Amino Fetus, this strange, revolting figure, part of the locust vial, who simply cannot be fed. That's all we have known, <laughs> really, about the Amino Fetus to this point, is whatever you do, do not feed the Amino fe Fetus. Uh, at last, of course, until Grey Crow gives him sustenance here through violence, <laughs> apparently. Now, the whole creation of Amino Fetus is a hilariously bleak inversion of the miracle of childbirth, right? This glorious perversion of Tarn the Uncarings for the purposes, it would seem, of a singularly unique annihilation engine. Why would Tarn want this thing? I don't know, <laughs> right? I'm not entirely sure, but apparently if the amino fetus is fed, it turns it into the atrocious infants and they can, uh, you know, find annihilation for the entire universe. Pretty, pretty powerful weapon to have on hand and constantly be walking around with and worried about. But after the the amino fetus is fed tarn says actually i don't want this whole universe destroyed so i'm gonna have to go cast this child into a black hole okay tarn needs to bail on the battle to send the emerging infant terrible into a black hole where again hopefully amino fetus can live happily ever after with zorn and rasputin from moira's ninth life i will not let it go i'm sure they're still out there the coolest reveal here, though, is that after Sinister prepares his Chimera, okay, and feels totally in control, right? Sinister's sitting there saying, hey, I got my Tarn Sinister Chimera, Omega level, I got this. We learn, big secret here, Emma Frost watching the whole time, okay? Emma takes over Empath telepathically, forces him to unleash Alex's evil side and destroy Mr. Sinister's experiments and very possibly Quanon's digital daughter code with it okay empath unleashes through his emotional manipulation unleashes this you know access inverted form of alex that has never been fixed for one reason or another and havoc just goes wild goes wild destroys the place and you know we don't know yet right but presumably the way this ends it looks like probably sinister's chimer experiments are destroyed as well as quanon's daughter the dna now this probably has big ramifications for Inferno because, again, Emma Frost right now is in a really interesting position heading into this event. She has learned a lot about what the Quiet Council is planning, what their secrets are, right? She learns about how Professor X is endorsing Beast in his um, deeply, deeply ethically messed up work on the Terra Verdians in the pages of X-Force, right? And now she's learning Sinister, the least surprising of all, is, of course, actually creating an Omega-level Chimera of himself. And as she says here, you were told not to play with yourself, right? You were told not to experiment on yourself and manipulates Havoc into destroying everything. So some interesting builds as far as secrets go into Inferno. Um, I love Hellions, obviously, as I've talked about. I mean, I truly, truly think this is the most enjoyable X-Men comic of the entire Reign of X and probably a little bit earlier than that even. I think one of the reasons it's so great is Hellions, it, it, for, like on a craft perspective, obviously it's great, right? Zeb Wells is doing fantastic writing. The artists who step in are really selling the comedy of it all. Um, the character dynamics, the, the structure of it, everything about it is quite smart. But it's also so, so good at playing with the toys, right? At playing with the Krakone playground and saying, okay, what here about House and Powers was cool? Uh, the development of Mr. Sinister is a core player in this. Okay, what can we do with that? The development of Chimeros is this potential, is this budding thing that is very interesting and has a lot of potential for the Krakoan era. Cool, let's play with that. Oh, we have Araco and we have mutants there that are that are totally unique and we can kind of create and play with that. Cool. Taking all of that, pushing forward with forward momentum, so many of the books, especially the Dawn of X titles right now, have stagnated. They are stuck in the mud. They are not doing a lot. Hellions never quite feels like that. And even if it wants to, if it could, it has established character dynamics and comedy to a point where it could get away with that. <laughs> you know, it definitely could. Um, and it, it's just, it, it's consistently impressive to me. And I think, too, one thing that doesn't get enough credit here is Zeb Wells, you know, it, years of honing craft, right? Writing really great comics from like 2008 to 2012 at Marvel, um, or rather, like, writing really good comics, right? Writes a good New Mutants run, there's some good Spider-Man stuff in there, others as well. Uh, leaves, right? Doesn't write Marvel comics for a long period of time, is doing robot chicken stuff, doing uh, TV and, and movies and, and writing that way, but comes back after years of honing the craft and can now write this, this kind of, like, essential book, right? This really great Hellion series. Um, it just speaks to bringing in these experienced writers, potentially, who can come in, bring different perspectives to the books. It doesn't mean only bring in writers, uh, writers who have literal decades of Marvel experience, but Zeb Wells' path is unique, and, and it really shows that he has evolved into this writer that, that I'm truly excited about. You know, as a name, I liked Wells' work 
previously. Now, you know, I'm, I'm heartily in love, and the fact that Zeb Wells is one of the, if not the primary sort of brain trust on the relaunch Spider-Man Beyond series to come has me incredibly excited about the direction of that as well. You know, like Hellions really is a, um, it's an absolute standout in the superhero comic scene. So the Krakone for the next issue reads, it all falls apart. No surprise there. Uh, we got, we're going to have an Inferno going on. We got Trial of Magneto going on. And based on this cover, we got John Greycrow saying, I've been betrayed. Now it's time to take out the rest of the Hellions. Uh, the unit is not going to stick together for much longer. It does not seem. And, uh, and there should be no, no major surprise there. So Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, thanks for supporting over on Comic Book Herald's Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash comicbookherald if you are so inclined to support the website and the work and the podcast and, of course, the YouTube videos here. And thanks in particular to the Mysterious Benefactors who support at a very, very generous level. Again, I'm Dave. You can find my stuff at comicbookherald.com, at comicbookherald on social. I'm probably most active on Twitter. Uh, look for Best Comics Ever in My Marvel This Year podcast for more from me. So thanks, everybody, for listening. And as always, enjoy the comics.